Welcome, folks, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. Today, I'm speaking with Radhika Chalsani, a photojournalist based in New York City. And Radhika has been around the world and uh, photographed lots of very interesting things as a photojournalist. Um, her concern right now uh, as a photojournalist and a photographer is medical care for photographers. And she's come online to talk a little bit about the Affordable Care Act and what it means for photographers. Radhika, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I wanted to know, I mean, as a, as a photographer uh, and as, 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 a, as, a, as a community of photographers, uh, you know, we should be concerned about our health and certainly uh, how we're going to pay for it. And there's been a lot of confusion, I think, with how uh, the Affordable Care Act or the Obama Care Act or whatever you want to call it uh, is, has been pitched to us. Um, what is, in, in the very simplest terms, what is the health insurance marketplace like? What is, what is, what is the exchange? What does that mean? Well, first of all, um, I'm, I want to say that I'm not an expert on, on health insurance. I have had to do a lot of my own research in terms of knowing what would work best for me uh, since I wanted to see um, how I might benefit from the new plans that are being offered. Um, I am a photographer. I've done a lot of healthcare stories. I've understood, um, also having grown up in a family of doctors, um, how important good health care is um, and how hard that can come um, can be to get in the US um, with how expensive insurance is for particularly for self-employed people who don't benefit from employer-based health care um, so I had to navigate all of this for myself um, and I wanted to share the information that I learned um, and as the Open Show New York producer, uh, we as an organization decided that this would be a good thing for us to get involved in, and we talked to other organizations such as um, the American Society of Media Photographers, the New York Chapter, um, Asian American Writers Workshop, uh, South Asian Journalists Association, and we all teamed up uh, to put on this information session. When is uh, that? When is that session? Is that coming up? The, uh, the event's going to be February 25th in New York City at the Asian American Writers Workshop. Um, and we've also been able to do this with sponsorship from Photo Shelter, who also as an organization felt this was really important information to get out to photographers. And very little um, has been getting out directly into our community um, about the Affordable Care Act, mostly because it's just such a confusing topic. Um, health insurance in general, Obamacare specifically, and there's been a lot of bad um, publicity. I mean, especially uh, politically, because so many people have been against um, any kind of reforms, and also because of the bad rollout with the websites and the technical problems. Okay, um, I know we uh, offline we had talked a little bit about uh, really the, the the looming deadline, uh, you know, for photographers, for people to sign up for uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, and the exchange, and to sign up for an exchange, you know, right? Right. Uh, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about that deadline and what does that mean exactly for photographers? Well, that's one of the single most important reasons um, I felt uh, we needed to do this event. And uh, right now, uh, I wish we could have done it a few months earlier. But um, as I went through the process, it, I realized that, like a lot of other people, I did not understand um, what this deadline meant. Um, March 31st is the, the deadline for the first open enrollment period for Obamacare. Um, a lot of people have just kind of understood that that meant that they could sign up the next enrollment period. Um, so because of website problems, because of all this, you know, confusion about what's available to them, if it would benefit them, a lot of people that I know have been sitting on the fence and just thinking that they can sign up later. Um, having gone to an information session with Renata Marinara, who's the, a navigator that's been trained by the federal government, um, and she's going to be doing our talk. Um, I understood that this was actually a really critical deadline because it, you won't be able to sign up on the exchange for health insurance after March 31st unless you've had a major life change and that's defined as losing your current insurance, losing your job, uh, getting married, having a kid. It, if you're just a freelancer who's been waiting to see how well it works and then you want to sign up later, you may be out of luck with the current rules. That's pretty scary stuff, isn't it? It is, and the information is just not getting out. It's not getting out to people across the country. It's not getting out to photographers, photo editors, people in our, our business. 
who is who's okay let's talk about who is eligible then for the insurance in the, in the marketplace i mean what does that mean exactly and like can can somebody who is who doesn't have insurance right now can sign up before march 31st is that right Right. Well, so again, I'm not an expert, so um, definitely people need to check information out on their own and come to our talk because we do have an expert um, giving it. Um, I think the biggest thing they need to know is that as of January 2014, um, nobody can be prevented from getting insurance because of pre-existing conditions. And that's huge. It's huge for people dealing with cancer or any other you know, illnesses or chronic situations where in the past they'd been turned down. For insurance, that's no longer the case. Um, my understanding is that if you are not eligible for employer-based health insurance, you are eligible for the exchange. Um, I do think that the benefits are greater to people who um, have lower net incomes, or as officially it's referred to as adjusted gross income, uh, just because of the subsidies. Okay, t tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, what are the cutoffs in terms of? Um, so the. The qualifications yeah. now, the biggest part about this is that there's been a Medicaid expansion in some states, not all. A lot of states have refused to, to participate in that. Um, New York uh, has participated in it. So if, you, if your adjusted gross income is under $15,800, you qualify for Medicaid, which means essentially free insurance. Um, if you earn between $15,800 and a little under $46,000, um, you qualify for a subsidy. And again, there's a lot of misinformation about that. A lot of times you'll read websites and Q&As and, and people talk about your income, but they just say income. They don't refer to the fact that it's adjusted gross income. And gross income and adjusted gross income are a really big difference in numbers for self-employed people because of the write-offs that they're eligible for in their tax returns. Can you give us an example where somebody may be affected by that? I mean, give me, give me, an example of a photographer who's making, let's say, twenty thousand dollars, right? right? And as what, gross income, or? As, as, as gross income, right? Uh, <clears throat> well, twenty thousand dollars, even even at gross income, they're going to get a subsidy. Um, but let's say let's say you earn, you know, you took you took in sixty thousand dollars in gross uh, last year, and you know you deduct part of your rent, you deduct your office equipment, your camera equipment that you purchased, uh, you know, part of your utilities to operate in business, um, that could get you to a number that qualifies for a subsidy. So it's really important to understand the difference between those two numbers to start with. Um, when you go online, when you go, th you know, the website for New York has a, a tax, as a, a premium estimator that you can type in these numbers, but you need to know which number to type in to make sure that you're getting the right information for yourself. Does it help to work with a, um, a CPA and trying to come, sort of come up with those numbers and say, hey, this is what I've actually been making? All this, um, all this stuff. I, don't, I don't know if you need to do that. I think, you know, if you've been filing your tax returns, um, when you make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with the navigators, they will ask you, to bring in your last tax return that you filed um, and they make it really clear it's line 37 on your federal taxes so if you've been filing your taxes you should have a pretty good idea what number that is approximately every year okay. um, and you use that as a guide for filling out these forms on the application process um, for the Affordable Care Act you um, are asked to put in your at your estimated adjusted gross for the last three months of 2013 or your estimated gross for the last adjusted gross for the last three months last sorry the first three months of 2014 okay. so if you filed your taxes in 2012 2011 you should have a pretty good idea of where you fall on that income scale given how um, you know varied the income can be from year to year though I mean it's not like you know, for photo photographers are getting a steady paycheck. Yeah. How, how does that? How does that? Um, well, that also come is into very, play. Uh, um, again, some information that isn't getting out very well, um, and it is something that photographers should pay attention to because, let's say, um, you fill out the application and you put down what you estimate is going to be your adjusted gross for the first three months of 2014. 
when you're completing the application, you actually are asked two things. If you want to take the, if you're eligible for a subsidy, if you want to take that subsidy up front and then just pay the difference going forward for the, um, your plan, or you want to pay for that plan in full and then have a tax credit when you file your taxes for 2014. And what that means is also, even if you take your subsidy up front, if you suddenly have a much larger adjusted gross when you actually file your 2014 taxes, you may have to pay back some of that subsidy. All right. So it sh you should be aware of what the standard plan is in that premium and what you know the difference might be in that case. Um, so I think that's a concern for people and they should be aware that that's an issue. Um, but I still think that for most people they might, they'll still find that the non-subsidized plans are still a better deal than what they currently have and they're getting more for it. Uh, I know that with when I was looking at options as a photographer uh, it was very frustrating because there weren't that many options. Um, you had to pay attention to both what that premium was going to be, what the deductible was going to be, what your maximum out-of-pocket expenses are. Um, all of these are stipulated in all the plans on the exchange, and it's one of the things that people need to consider. A lot of times it's such a confusing process that they may only pay attention to that premium number. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know a friend who, you know, he pays a, a health insurance for him and his wife and two kids, and um, his deductible is ten thousand dollars. You know, so if he's paying maybe a thousand dollars a month premium plus the ten thousand, that ten thousand is a really big number because it means that you, even though you're paying a premium, you still have to pay out of pocket for all your medical care until you hit that premium, right. and it's only then that your insurance really kicks in. Wow! So it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, when it comes down to selecting a plan or comparing plans out there, what do you recommend? Um, I definitely recommend coming to our talk. Okay. Um, I, as, like, as my own, my own situation, I mean, I tend to think I'm pretty knowledgeable about this stuff, but I have found it overwhelming, um, to try to understand. We have probably the most confusing healthcare health insurance system in the world and I've lived overseas in several countries um, so I have some comparison for that because I always had private insurance there. Um, it, it is really really confusing um, and that's a big reason we're having this talk so that Renata can tell people what to look for and how to compare plans, what numbers you know they need to consider. Um, it's one. It's the first thing is to find out. You know, know what your income is. See if you qualify um, for subsidies or Medicaid. Um, once you're able to type those numbers in, whether you do it on the website for your exchange on the New York State website, there is a tab there that you can download a premium calculator. Okay. Yep. And type in your zip code, and based on your adjusted gross and that zip code, it'll tell you what plans will you'll be eligible for and what those premiums are. Um, you know, for someone in Brooklyn, uh, the insurance companies might be somewhat different than the companies that are available to them in Queens. So that's why the zip code part's important. Oh, wow. Wow. That's incredible. Um, obviously, the, the, the presentation on February 25th is specific to those living in New York State, correct? Uh, um, with some I mean, overlap with yeah, yeah I think I think it's an imp I think it's helpful to anyone okay. um, to have the basic information okay. um, in terms of like I said these things about what's a premium what's a deductible what's what's a maximum out of pocket um, all of that is I think relevant to anyone uh, attending the talk I mean I think there will be some things that are a little bit more specific to New York in terms of uh, there being a handout about which companies are on the New York Exchange and what their websites are to look at, but I think it's I think it's a pretty helpful talk to people who are um, not in New York specifically. What should um, photographers do to help to, to to get help signing up? I mean, what is it that they need to be to to, to do the first thing they need to do? Um, I really think it it. 
it's if you're not very well versed in this stuff and don't and find it too confusing, I think the most important thing you can do is is if you can't attend our talk, see if there's any other organizations um, in your area that have them. Um, Renata Marinara works for the Actors Fund, and uh, they actually have been having weekly information sessions at their office. It's just that a lot of people don't know about these things. Um, again, on the New York State website, there is um, a list of where to call to make an appointment with a navigator. Um, so there are federally trained navigators all across the country. Um, if you go to the website, whether it's the federal website or your state one, you should be able to find out based on where you live what offices you can call. Um, either they might have a general session, information session, or you can definitely schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a navigator who can help you walk through all of this and make sense of it for you. Um, those appointments are free. They're one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the only thing that I would stipulate is this deadline's getting close. Mm -hmm. And right. as every deadline approaches, they get a rush of people who are suddenly like, yeah, we want to make an appointment and figure this out. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I went to Renata's talk in December at the Actors Fund. Um, I was unable to schedule a talk um, a one-on-one -on -one session till early January because everybody was scrambling to sign up before December, before the end of December. So you just have to plan a little bit. I mean, it is already the almost the end of February and the deadline's March 31st. Um, so that's why we're really encouraging people, if they can, come to our talk. If they can't, um, you know, look up whatever information they can. They can also email us um, at Open Show, and we'll try to put them in touch with people. Um, it's a confusing process, so we just want to kind of help our photo community find out what can benefit them. Excellent. Tell us again where it's taking place. Uh, obviously, the date is February 25th for the, right. for the presentation. Um, tell us where, where is it taking place? Um, so it's February 25th. It's from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., and it's at the Asian Writers Workshop, which is on West 27th Street in Manhattan. Okay. Um, if they want more information, they can go to our website, which is openshow.org. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's, if they want more information, they can go to our website, which is openshow.org forward slash NYC. Okay. And that will also, um, it'll have information about the talk and uh, links to register for it. It will also have some links on there um, to the New York State Exchange uh, links for the premium calculator. Uh, we're also trying to get some information out about a program in New York uh, that New York offers specifically that's called Child Health Plus, uh, where you can insure your child separately and you are um, you can also be eligible for income subsidies for that as well. So we just try to put out some important initial information for people. Um, so even if they don't attend our talk or if they want to get started mm -hmm. on this stuff before coming, um, that they can. Uh, from from the sound of it, it's, uh, it looks like if, if photographers are smart, they'll go to this presentation. I mean, it's well, loaded. Yeah. It's loaded it's, with information that I mean. It sounds like you're guiding, uh, like you're holding people's hand and walking them through the process. Which, I mean, I would go if I if I needed insurance or wanted yeah. to go on the exchange and needed to have fine insurance. I would be I would be there because I am. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm. I'm not well versed in this, and and certainly I'm, I'm more inclined to be out there making pictures and not really worrying about this. But this is a, a huge concern, I'm sure, right? Yeah, and I mean, I will say that from my own personal experience, the talk was extremely helpful to give me some basics of how to look at this stuff and what I needed to consider. Uh, I still felt the need to make that one-on-one -on -one appointment, and even after that one-on-one -on -one appointment, I still sat down and did some individual research to figure out which company I wanted to sign up with. Um, so I think you're not necessarily going to get all your answers in this one, this presentation, but I think it's going to be really helpful um, for people who need to do this or want to do this. Um, I, one of the reasons that I wanted to organize this talk is that I've actually been really surprised uh, that a lot of my colleagues and friends aren't looking at it. I think because of all the bad publicity, they think, oh, it's not going to be any better than what they have. Or maybe if they don't have insurance and they're healthy, they don't realize what can happen suddenly um, in their lives and make a difference. So, do you, do you feel people are generally thinking, well, because of the political craziness that's happening in Washington, 
that this may all go away and maybe you know it's a huge waste of time and you know they just need um, to, they just need to go on their lives and and do the best they can and and it'll it'll be all okay i mean no i don't know if think people think it'll go away i think they're kind of already anticipating disappointment that it's not going to be much help to them um personally i wish we had universal health care I think this is a step in the right direction. It's not perfect. There's a lot of things that still frustrate me about this, but I personally will be saving several thousand dollars in premiums this year, and I'm getting better quality coverage on the exchange than I had previously. So that's what I've been trying to communicate to people, that it's worth their time to check it out. Um, and, and just see if it will work better for them because chances are for a self-employed person, it will, um, you might think you have a great insurance policy right now. It may be expiring by the end of the year. If it doesn't offer the minimum standards of services that Obamacare has now required, um, you also may not realize that you do have this large deductible on your current insurance and maybe you will get a better deal on the insurance policies in exchange. One of the things that also was really important for me to figure out, and again, is not really readily available to people, um, even after going to this talk and getting a list of all the companies that were on the exchange, it wasn't that helpful to me to go to those individual websites because I found out that most of the companies are not actually advertising the policies that they offer on the exchange on their own websites. They're offering their policies that they offer outside of the exchange. So that's where it gets really confusing and you really do actually need to go to the New York State website, create an account and look there at what's being offered because these companies are not, most of them are not putting that information out there very well. Let me ask you this, uh, are, are the pricing, you mentioned two different pricing essentially, you know, the company has got uh, its own website, it has its own pricing there. Is the exchange pricing higher or lower? It's not so much that it's higher or lower. First of all, you're only going to uh, be be eligible for a federal subsidy on the exchange. You can't just like call up the insurance company and go, "Hey, I want this plan," because they they can't sell it to you. Right. Um, so if you think you're eligible for a subsidy, you have to go through the exchange to get it. Um, and they are different plans. In a lot of cases, uh, there's one company on the New York Exchange uh, that's a very well-established, you know, brand. Basically, everybody would know them and feel secure in signing up with that company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the plan that they offer on the exchange to provide a reasonable premium is a it includes a much smaller part of their network than other plans that you could buy from them directly and that can be a big difference for people you might think like oh I know this company's name they're good I'll go with them and then you sign up and you're like your doctor's not on there like your doctor takes that company otherwise but not the specific plan and so it does take a little bit of homework yep. to understand that thank you so much for joining us today Radhika uh, You're welcome. I, 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 more people will come to the I, event. Yes. I hope uh, we have a second event uh, pretty soon after that if we have a good response to this one. So, But I do encourage everyone to, to check it out. If they don't come to the talk that we're having, to look at what where else they can go to get some help and information. Last question. What is the capacity of the, the place that the presentation is going to be held? Because, I mean, it can hold like 200 people, 300 people. What are we talking about? Uh, right now, the seating capacity is about 60 to 70, and probably another 20 standing. Okay. Um, which is why we're looking to have a second event if we do have a good response um, and see what our options are. But we wanted, because it's such a short time frame before the deadline, we wanted to try to just get something out there right away. Again, thanks for joining us. I look forward to hearing more about the uh, event after it takes place um, from you when we uh, talk again. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye.